Recording a Zoom meeting is easy. This video walks you through recording tips for a Zoom meeting that's hosted on a computer. I'm Marcia Chadley from the Creative Life Center, and I enjoy demystifying technology for you so that you can share your offerings online. Let's get started by looking at the steps for recording on Zoom, the how to record on Zoom, and also talk about the difference between recording to the Zoom cloud and to your local computer. That way you'll be able to decide what's the best option for you in any particular situation. Later on, we're gonna talk about how you can share your Zoom recordings. Recording during a Zoom meeting is easy. Right now we're inside a meeting that's being hosted on a computer, so the controls you'll see are those that you see and in the placements that you see them on a computer. On a tablet, they're a little different, and again, very different on a phone. So right now we're on the computer using those controls. The record button down here at the bottom is what you want to press. It's going to do different things depending on if you have a free Zoom account or a paid Zoom account. If you have a free Zoom account, all recordings are done right to your local computer. So there's no choice. You click the button, it's going to start recording. I have a paid Zoom account, and with paid Zoom accounts, you have the choice of either recording to your local computer or to the Zoom cloud. So I'll be given that choice when I click the button in this little menu. I'm going to click record to this computer. You can see when I start recording, there's a little bar that opens up in my screen to let me know recording is happening. There are controls up here where I can pause the recording. I can stop the recording here. I can do the same thing at the bottom of the screen here in my, in my Zoom control bar, pause it or stop. You can use any of these controls. It really doesn't matter whatever is easier for you. When I'm looking right here at my, my webcam, these controls are a little bit easier to see and closer to find. I'll usually use those. Now, one of the times I pause a Zoom recording is when there's a breakout room happening. So when you pause a recording, the nothing is being recorded. And then when I start the recording again, it'll all be together in one file. I do this during breakout rooms. Breakout rooms are never recorded, but this main area of the Zoom the home area here is recorded during a breakout room, and I don't need a whole lot of recording during breakout rooms. I want that to go away, so I don't have to worry about cutting it out. If I pause the video recording, and then when people come back, I resume the recording. Now I'm still recording in the same file. If I were to stop the recording, and I do this often at the end of, say, a webinar when I'm done with the official recording, but I've said I'll stay around and talk with people for a while. I'll stop the recording right here. And now I get a little message saying that once my meeting is over, the file will be converted to MP4. Right now it's just hanging out. And I can talk and nothing is being recorded. If I decide I do want to record again, I can start the recording again the same way we did before with this button down here at the bottom. And now I'll have a second file of starting both audio and video because when you record on Zoom, you're getting both audio and video files. You as a host can always record your meetings. You can also let participants record their meetings. So let me show you how to do that. So right now we have a participant here and under the more menu, I can say allowed to record local files. If I do that, then Terry will be able to record files, record this meeting to their own computer. They can't record to the cloud, to my cloud, but they can record to their own computer. I take advantage of this when I'm doing one-on-one -on -one thought partners with people. We can be talking and having conversations that I want them to be able to access later. If I let them record it on their machine, I don't need to share the recording with them. They, get, they have it available for them right away. Now there are great options for sharing video recordings and we'll talk about those a little bit later in this video. I want to talk about the differences between recording to the cloud and recording to your local computer. When you record to the cloud, what's being recorded is speaker view, which is what we're doing right now. You'll see the big window with the speaker. When you record to your computer, it's gonna record what you're looking at. 
Let me get rid of this so that you can just see me a little bit bigger right now. It will record either the, the speaker view like this, or if I switch it to gallery view, it's going to start recording the gallery view. I may want to have on my recording everybody's face on there so we can see who was there. So you have a choice of that when you record to your local computer because it will do whatever you're looking at. Now let's end our meeting so you can see what happens to the files and where you can find them. Now the re video recording has been converted and a folder opens up to show me the files that I have. So I have an audio only file, I have a video file, which is this Zoom file right here, MP4, and this is a different type of video file. So I normally will use this MP4 file, or I will use the audio only file if I want to just share the audio. Let's look at another easy way to get to your Zoom recordings. From your Zoom app, go to the Meetings tab, Go to the Recorded tab, and you have a list of all your different meetings that you've held and recorded. So if you click Open, it's going to open the file location. You can see and access all these files. You could play them. You could play the audio only. You could delete. All right here from your little Zoom app. Really handy feature. There are more recording options in your Zoom account in the browser when you log in there. You can get there by going to View More Settings here under your Settings icon in the app. It will open up that, let's move this out of the way, your settings in your Zoom account. I'm already logged in here. Click on the Recording tab and there's a variety of different options that you can look at and use here. Here's your cloud recording options, let you change a little bit about how you're sharing that. And one of the things to note is when you are sharing your screen, there are the little thumbnail pictures that show up. While you can move those around on your screen for yourself, the recording puts those in the upper right-hand corner of whatever it is that you're sharing. So you'll want to remember that. Say you're sharing a slideshow or something else like that. But there are a few options that you can do with those um, settings here if you're recording to the cloud. Now that you have your Zoom recordings, you can decide how to share those with other people. How you share them depends on who you want to see them and what you want them to see or hear. You can share the audio only file or you can share the video file or both. A good place to host your audio file is SoundCloud. There's a couple of places that I use to host my Zoom recordings, Vimeo and YouTube. Let's talk a little bit about the differences and the similarities between those two. Both Vimeo and YouTube let you upload a video and share it either publicly, only to yourself, or to a limited number of people. Have it be a private video. On Vimeo, you do that by setting a password to your video and only people with that password can see it. On YouTube, you limit who can see your video by making it visible either with a, a link, a URL, or by sharing email addresses for only those people who can see your YouTube video. And then you either share that URL or you have the, the YouTube knows who sees the video by the email addresses. You can also set controls about where and who can embed your videos on both platforms. YouTube accounts are free. They're also publicly searchable by Google. So I put my free public videos up on YouTube so they can be searched by Google and Google can help send people there who could benefit by what I'm trying to teach. Vimeo um, accounts are free and paid. It depends on how much storage you want on Vimeo, how many videos you're gonna put up there, how big they are, and also how often you wanna upload something, whether or not you can use the free account or a paid account. So you can experiment with the free Vimeo account and see what you think. YouTube videos, at the end of the video, you'll notice that they show you a suggested next videos to watch. And Vimeo does not do that in the same way. I normally use Vimeo to hold, to hold videos that I'm gonna use within a course. So I don't want people going from that course to some other video. 
or videos that say like a recording of a Zoom meeting or webinar that I only want a certain audience to see. I can set a password and send that password out. One of the other things to know a difference between YouTube and Vimeo is that YouTube will automatically add captions for you. Now captions are a really important part of my videos. I want people who are hearing impaired to be able to read the captions, make them more accessible. I also want people who are watching a video in a place where they can't or don't want to have the sound on to be able to get that information. YouTube captions are okay, but they're not the best. So I actually add captions to my videos, both on Vimeo and on YouTube, using a tool called Rev, and I'll put information about that in the video description. I find captions to be very helpful. I have almost 18% of my views on YouTube right now are people who are using those captions, so I really encourage you to do that. You have a good foundation now to get started using Zoom recordings. Let me know what other questions you have in the comments.